Did you know that Netflix offers games that you can download for free if you have a Netflix subscription? They just added a new game that I'm super excited about, so we'll get into that too. Apparently Netflix has been offering games since November 2021, but I just recently learned about this. They launched with just five games that are now up to over 50. Now these are just iOS and Android games, but there are some pretty impressive offerings here. And the best part is that there are no ads or in-app purchases. I wanna talk about some of the games available and the best ways to play them. Let's start off strong and talk about one of the best games on the list. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Shredder's Revenge. This is the full game, not some watered down mobile version. This is the same game that you would play on Steam, Switch, Xbox, whatever. I have sunk so much time into Shredder's Revenge. I'll beat the game with one character and then fire it up again to play as somebody else. It's a pretty short game, but it's a blast to play. I played a lot of Turtles in Time when I was a kid, and this reminds me so much of that game. The Netflix version currently doesn't have the DLC, and since there's no in-app purchases, there's not any way to add it, but I'm hoping that they will include it later on. You probably noticed that I'm playing on this little console. This is called the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. It's an Android device that looks and feels a lot like a tiny Nintendo Switch Lite. And since it runs Android, I can play a lot of these Netflix games with the built-in controls. I despise playing games with a touchscreen. Now, not all games recognize the built-in controls, which kind of sucks, but I'll take what I can get. Another game that works great with the built-in controls is Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Now, here's the really cool thing. I originally started playing this game on my iPhone. When I installed the game on my Retroid Pocket, the game seamlessly picked up where I left off on my phone. That means some games support cloud saves across multiple platforms since it's tied to your Netflix account instead of your Apple ID or your Google account. Just know this doesn't work for every game. This is a puzzle game that will make you want to smash your screen. In typical Shovel Knight fashion, it's not easy. It's kind of hard to explain the gameplay, but you basically have to survive each level by attacking enemies. The thing is, when you attack them, they attack you back, so you have to keep an eye on your health. When you take out an enemy, you also take out all the enemies of the same type that are adjacent to it. I am very bad at this game. You'll also find the very popular Bloons Tower Defense 6 on here. Touch controls are fine for this game, I just can't use a touchscreen controller for games like this. I think everyone knows what Bloons Tower Defense 6 is at this point, so I'll make this quick. It's obviously a tower defense game where you set up attacking monkeys with different specialties to prevent a bunch of balloons from getting to the end of a course. It sounds pretty crazy, but it's a very fun mobile game and I highly recommend it. I was very excited to see Samurai Showdown on the list. Now, I'm not really into fighting games, although I am always down to Smash. Even though fighting games aren't really my thing, I played a lot of Samurai Showdown on the SNES when I was a kid. The game looks pretty good for a mobile game. I'd say PS2 graphics are slightly better, but there's a pretty big and annoying issue here. There is no controller support, so you're forced to play with the touchscreen controls. Like I said earlier, I hate playing games with a touchscreen controller, so there's zero chance I'll be playing this on my phone. The Retroid Pocket has a cool feature where you can map the physical buttons to virtually tap the touchscreen. So I took a couple minutes to set it up, and while it's not perfect, it's better than the alternative. There are some attacks and features that I still need the touchscreen for, like navigating the menus, but overall, I can work with this. Slay Away Camp was a pretty well-received game, and Netflix has a custom version of the sequel called Netflix and Kill. This is a puzzle game where the objective is to move the slasher around a map and take out all of the other characters without any escaping. The UI is pretty clever and is designed to look like the traditional Netflix app. You select different horror movies to play, and each level has multiple tiers of difficulty. There are even multiple slashers to unlock as you play. The game features a lot of cartoon blood with some silly death animations. A game I was pleasantly surprised to see here is Spiritfarer. This game has been in my backlog for a hot minute now, and being able to play this on the Retroid is very cool. I did also test the game on my iPad, and was pretty bummed to see that there are no cloud saves for this title. I had to start a new game. Spiritfarer is a game where you're tasked with picking up spirits from various islands and taking them to the afterlife. You do so by putting them on your boat that you upgrade throughout the game. There's fishing, cooking, mining, and all of those other things that I'm a sucker for in games like this. The art style is amazing and I can't wait to sink more time into this game. No pun intended. There are some simpler games available like Solitaire and Chess, and there's also this too hot to handle dating sim that's been downloaded over a million times on the Play Store. I guess they really do have a game for everybody. The last game I wanna talk about is the newest addition to the Netflix lineup. 
Dead Cells. The reason this is such a big deal is because they didn't just add the game, they added all of the DLCs as well, including the Castlevania expansion. Sure, this game came out in 2018, so it's not exactly new, but who cares? This is a massive amount of gameplay in your pocket. Dead Cells is a roguelike Metroidvania, so you'll be replaying the same areas over and over, but the layout and drops will be different every time. I've been playing this on my Retroid and just losing ridiculous amounts of time because it's pretty addictive. It's fun to try new weapon combos and look for more blueprints to unlock even more items. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been playing any of these games, or if you didn't even know Netflix offered games at all. An easy and free way to support this channel is to just subscribe and maybe share this video with a friend. You can follow me on my social medias here if you're into that sort of thing, and I'll catch you on the next one.